Welcome back. I am Quinnin. But since my little sister always calls me Herman Nerman and Herman Nerman rhymes, I am now going to go with the name Herman Nerman. So, now that that's out of the way, today we're going to be taking a look at how to take a hard drive out of an old broken laptop. So my dad bought this Acer laptop several years ago. But then the screen broke, like half of it just went black. Not a big deal, we just hooked it up to a monitor, right? But then it started overheating. So then dad couldn't access the old pictures and files that, that he had stored from me and my siblings as when we were little kids. So so then he really wanted those, those photos and and um, programs back. So he assigned me to take out the hard drive and see if I could get the files back. So, so here's the laptop. It's an old Acer. It's pretty beat up. You can see that there's keys missing and everything. So when you're removing a hard drive from a laptop, you just unscrew all those screws. The screws there, 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 there. There's one up there, there, and one right there. All right, so then once you remove all the screws, there should be a little notch there. If there's not, just pry it up. And you'll know pretty quickly whether or not you took all the screws because then it'll start bending. But in my case, you gotta use a little bit of force, but you don't want to snap anything. So you kind of gotta pull it up a little bit. And then you can see it just popped right and there you can sort of see the insides now so this here is the hard drive right there and that's what we're after so it's kind of reflective right there so you can't see it very well it's a hhd hard drive and right there's a ram computer fan cooling all right so there are two screws that you have to remove there's one right here and one right here where my thumb is but the problem with the one where the thumb was wasn't there it was already missing so so you want to take out all the screws that you can see that are connected. You don't want to take out these screws that, are ju that just go into the hard drive, otherwise they'll fall apart on you. Alright, so once you get it off, you want to pull, in this case, you want to pull it out because the connector here was fixed. It was a fixed connector, so you have to pull it out, otherwise you'll snap it. And you don't want to snap these things. Alright, so this is what it should look like when it's disconnected from the connector here. You can see that it hasn't moved a whole lot here, but it's moved just enough to clear this connector. So, here I've got it in my hand, popped it out. Once it's detached, it's very easy to lift out. This here is the hard drive taken out of the computer. As I said before, it's an HHD drive. So now this is my tower here. So, you just pull off the side, there's sometimes two screws here. Well, most of the times nowadays. So you, you want to unscrew those before trying to pull this off. And then once it's pulled, once those two screws out, just pull it right off. There's a little ledge there, and try not to break that security seal right there. So here I've got it off, as you can see. So the hard drive in my desktop is right here. All right. So there's a kind of an inside of the system. There's the motherboard, the computer fan. There's the DVD drive. There's the hard drive, power supply, computer fans beneath that is a heat sink, and underneath that is a CPU. There's my RAM chips and capacitors, and I could go on for a while with that. So we'll just move it along here. So the next step that you want to do is disconnect the hard drive here, unless you have a second cord. If you have a second cord, there's a little connection here that you could try to connect to, or you, there's, more, um, there's more slots down beneath on your motherboard that you can hook the second cable set of cables up to. When removing this cord here, you want to press that little metal pin over there. And right here, it, the picture's kind of fuzzy, but I pushed it and it pops out very easy. There's the power cord there and it's a little harder to take out. So you gotta pull a little bit, but you wanna keep it straight as you're pulling it out. Cause if you twist it any, then you could snap this so you gotta be very careful that you pull it straight out and you don't twist it or anything. And you definitely don't want any up or down movement. That'll snap it for sure. All right, so there I've got it disconnected. So now connecting the second hard drive, very easy stuff. So you take the, the small connector there, cord there, hook it up to the small one right there. Just like that, it just clips right on, very easy like. So then here I've placed the second hard drive on top of the first hard drive because uh, there's not a whole lot of space in there. So now this way I connect the power cords to the hard drive. So you just push that on and there you've got it connected. So now, so then after that you want to get everything rehooked up again. All right, so when you start it up, if you, if you were running a Windows 10 system, you might get this message. The current BIOS settings says do not fully support the boot device. Click okay to enter the BIOS setup. And then go to advanced boot, see it. 
SM parameters and adjust the CSM compatibility support module settings to enable the boot. Draw it to boot device. All right, so you gotta click OK here. So you'll be in the BIOS menu here. This is it. This is the BIOS menu. All right, so then there's a button right here down at the bottom. Advanced mode F7 is kind of highlighted right now. If you ever want to access the BIOS menu without having your computer glitch out on you, just press F2 when it's starting up. All right, so then here it says, do you want to enter the advanced mode? You click OK. You click OK. You'll be taken to a menu, and then up here, you'll want to click on boot. All right, so once you're in boot, you're going to want to scroll down here. You, The interface is a little difficult to master at first, but basically you just scroll. You don't actually click on that bar there. You can click on it or press enter. Either way works. So then the default setting should be auto. You will want to change that to enabled right here. Yep, so you want to change it to enabled and you'll get all this. Just leave it all as it is and click exit and then save changes and reset. And then you want to click yes. This is the BIOS setting change here. Just tells you all the changes that you made to the BIOS. So you click yes, your computer will restart and we got the Vista system running. So at first here, I had an issue here. I, the, the system wasn't recognizing the keyboard and mouse. So I couldn't, I couldn't do anything. So the thing to do with this is just push that power button and hold it in until it shuts down. Okay. Once it shuts down, wait a couple seconds and then start it up again. And then normally that will reset the system enough that it'll accept new configuration devices like a keyboard or a mouse. So that's what I just did there. You might get this message here too. Well, you probably will if you press the power button. And then you just want to hit enter at start windows normally. All right, so here you got, we got back to the login screen. So then I hit enter the password and I got in. And the first thing that happens is it says found new hardware. So basically the compute, the system can't find the old, the old hardware, the old graphics cards, the old drivers, all that. And it instead it's finding the new graphics cards and all that stuff, but it doesn't have the software drivers. You can navigate windows at this point, but trying to run any programs is a real pain in the butt. And trying to get new devices onto the computer, also a pain in the butt. Anyways, I ended up having to cancel that. All right, so now the, the next interesting thing that happened here was the USB was not detected by the computer, by the system. It wouldn't pick up my USB. So I had to get a, a rewritable disk and I put that into the computer and, and then all the files I wanted to copy over, I had to burn to the disk. So that took quite a bit of time. So, so here's some of the stuff that we were able to get from dad's old laptop. So this is an old picture. That's me right there. That's my little sister and that's my dad. I was only like three or four at this time. Don't even remember that place. This is a old video of Martin. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you liked this video or if this video helped you, leave a thumbs up. If you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comments down below. And I'll be seeing you in the next video. Herman Herman out.